I'd like to start this unboxing by apologizing to the Elgin Watch Company. I've been a pocket watch collector and a wristwatch collector for decades. And you know what? I've just never really liked the Elgin Watch Company. I don't really have a reason for this bias, but for some reason, their watches have just never really sparked my interest. Well, that's about to change. I picked up these two lots at a recent auction. By the way, I got this great 14 karat gold chain, but that's not what you came here to see. In this second box, well, this is the true prize. This is the watch that's made me change my opinion. I believe this is my new favorite pocket watch. Welcome to another episode of Pocket Watch Time. My name is Patrick W. As you feast your eyes on this absolutely gorgeous pocket watch, let me give you a little bit of a history lesson, and maybe this will help me explain what's going to be eventually an apology to the Elgin Watch Company. So the quick backstory. The Elgin Watch Company actually started out as the National Watch Company. They were founded in 1864. And one of the reasons that I've always kind of had a little bias against the company is they really sort of built their business on the Waltham model. They even went to the Waltham company and stole some of their employees to bring them over to their new founded company. So I guess that sort of made me always think Elgin was a bit second class. If you're going to collect the best American pocket watch, does originality and provenance mean anything? Well, to me it does. And for that reason, I think I've always really been partial to the Waltham watch company. Not to mention they make two of my favorite watches. They make the Stellar Bridge model, also known as the Premier Maximus, and they make the regular Maximus grade pocket watch. These wonderful 12 and 16 size pocket watches are some of my absolute favorites. But as it turns out, there might be a new guy in town. And speaking of towns, after the National Watch Company went over to Waltham and learned some of their techniques, they decided they were going to build a factory, and lo and behold, they built it in a town called Elgin, Illinois. And after about a decade of building watches in their new factory, the town became so famous that nobody called the watch company the National Watch Company anymore, they just called them Elgin. So in 1874, the National Watch Company actually changed their name to the Elgin National Watch Company. And they went on to be one of the most prolific watchmakers in the Americas. Elgin churned out more watches than Howard, Waltham, Hamilton, and all the rest combined. And right in the sweet spot of the company, that's when this watch was born. Most of Elgin's original releases, well, they're just kind of boring to me. In Elgin's heyday, they produced a watch called the C.H. Hulbert. This watch was named after a long-standing Elgin president and was produced right before his death and about a decade after his death. I'm not sure how much say Mr. Hulbert had in the design of this watch or if it's just his namesake, but I have to tell you, I'm a fan. And here's where the story gets interesting. These watches aren't the most rare watch I collect. In total, about 8,000 of these were made. In pocket watch numbers, that's actually a pretty high number. What makes these watches unique is the fact that they're actually usually pretty unique. I've never seen one halberd that looked like another halberd. I don't know if these watches were passion products of the company, churn out a hundred here when they had nothing better to do and they had a whole bunch of extra time on their hands, but these watches were a step above the rest. This became Elgin's flagship model in the prestige category. So if you were a fine gentleman of the 1920s and 30s, there was no better way to show off how important you were than by having a halberd on your side. So a few common characteristics. The Holbert was a 12 size pocket watch. The perfect prestige size. Slim, but large enough not to be dainty. This model has a 19 joule movement. This watch is fully adjusted and keeps excellent time thanks to its unique regulator. And not only does it have impressive specs, but the plates and the structure of this watch are unique and pretty eye-catching. So if the movement wasn't enough, which it is, this watch is just beaming with personality. And that brings us to the best part of this watch all the extras. So this watch is housed in a 14 karat gold solid case. This particular model has the Corsican bow. It's a bow that kind of looks like Napoleon's hat. Many of the Hulberts have this bow, but because these Hulberts are so unique, many of them don't. Some other Hulberts out there have bows that I've never seen on any other watch. It's almost like every one of these watches is one of a kind. But probably the feature that's the most striking about this watch is the dial and hands. This particular dial is a silver dial actual sterling silver. 
and thus you can see a nice patina to it. The texture and the patina of this dial, well, I can just sink my eyes into it and stare into the distance and forget the world around me. It's mesmerizing. And looking around the dial a little bit more, you see the unique hands and the extra special font that's used in this model. I just can't explain why I like it so much. It's unique, it's just a little bit weird, but somehow it just works. So as a total package, I just love it. And that's where Elgin, I owe you an apology. I still don't really care for most of the watches you make. Waltham is still probably my favorite brand. But I do have to tell you, Elgin, I think this is my favorite watch. I just love how unique it is. And I guess that's really the point of watch collecting. Finding a watch that you love and just touches you in a special way. My wife always says, if something doesn't bring you joy, well then you don't need it. And you know what? This watch brings me a lot of joy. So welcome to the collection, my first Elgin. I think you're a great addition to my watch family. I hope you enjoyed this review and a look at one of my new pocket watches. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. If you've got any comments or questions, please leave them below. It helps the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next week with a new episode. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe to Pocket Watch Time. I have lots of reviews on watches and on pocket watches. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below.